Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming on the issue of carbon dioxide taxation. And note it is not carbon taxation. What is missing is context. So the first part of my talk is going to be to provide you with context. And as a geologist, and there's many of my brothers and sisters in the room, uh, that is the context we need, not the context of just the last 100 years or so of thermometer measurements. Then I will move on and just give a couple of thoughts about how did we get to where we are at because we are at the most illogical position that it's possible to imagine. And I will conclude by making some constructive suggestions because anybody that doubts that Australia needs a climate policy hasn't been listening lately. And if you think of what happened in Victoria in the bushfires two years ago, the floods in Brisbane recently and the cyclone through North Queensland, it's an absolute no-brainer that Australia needs a proper climate event and hazard policy. Well, we don't have one. Instead, we have a carbon dioxide taxation policy. More of that later. Context. Now, context to a geologist is not a few decades. It's millions of years. And this is the key diagram. And I stress it's not global temperature. It's from a particular spot. And that spot is the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And it's a record of the last six million years. And in red, we have the temperature of the surface waters of the Pacific Ocean. And the scale on the right, the bar slipped a little bit between there and there, is about 10 degrees of change in mid to high latitudes. And what you see straight away is we're out here at 0 million years on the right, and the black bar is today's temperature across the graph. And straight away you see the first key point of context, which is for 3 million years, between 6 million and 3 million years ago, temperature was jogging up and down here about 2 to 3 degrees above today's temperature. What is all this nonsense about temperature at the end of the 20th century is higher than it's ever been before? Well, the answer is it's nonsense. You also see that as the temperature goes along, it's always jigging up and down. Change is what climate does. The phrase climate change is a tautology. It says the same thing twice. Climate. Climate always changes. There it is, by a degree or two. It never stays constant for long. Well, we also see about three and a half million years ago, something went wrong, in inverted commas, and the world descended into an ice house age, and the temperature cooled gradually over two and a half million years. And as it was cooling, the fluctuations in temperature got bigger and bigger until for the last million years, we had these huge glacial interglacial cycles. Now, only 20,000 years ago is when the last glaciation was, uh, on this scale, about uh, 10 degrees cooler, but on a global scale, that was about 6 degrees cooler than today. And that was the period of time. The water for the ice caps, of course, came out of the ocean, and so the sea level dropped. That was when the uh, our native Australians were able to walk to Tasmania and walk across Torres Strait. This sort of real climate change, real environmental change, is within the collective history of the native people of Australia. Now, we also see that prior to that great glaciation 20,000 years ago, there was a warm period 120,000 years ago, which was about two degrees warmer than today, degree or two. So the question that's posed at the top, is late 20th temperature unusual, unusually warm, which is what the Sydney Morning Herald tells us day in, day out? The answer to that question is no. No buts, no ifs. This isn't Bob Carter's opinion. There is nothing unusual about the temperature at the end of the 20th century. <clears throat> now, I was driving along the road the other day behind this yellow truck, and amazingly, out the back dropped a little briefcase. Inside the briefcase was one of those USB sticks. And inside the USB stick was a copy of Professor Will Steffen's talk <laughs> that, he <coughs> that he gave to the Multi-Party Climate Change Committee in Canberra on November the 23rd, I think it was, just before Christmas last year. If you think of where we're at in the political context, this was the final briefing that committee had on the science before they moved into dealing with the politics of how they're going to impose this carbon dioxide tax. It is astonishing to me that on that committee there is one scientist, and that is Professor Will Steffen. Professor Will Steffen has been advising the Department of Climate Change and prior to that the Greenhouse Office for about 10 years or more. And he is closely linked with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is part of the United Nations, which, admirable though it may be in other ways, is an unelected, unaccountable set of busybodies 
that see it as their business to tell Australia how to set its environmental policy. We do not let the United Nations tell us, or the World Bank, I should say, tell us how to set our annual budget. Why do we accept, for some reason, that we're not grown up enough to set our own environmental policy, we have to take advice from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or the IPCC. So I will return to this uh, and I'll dissect a couple of slides of Professor Stephens in a moment. But the second thing that happened about a week later was I was driving along behind another yellow truck and this fell off the back. <clears throat> and what this is, is the 16 page briefing paper that the Prime Minister's office supplied about two weeks ago to all government MPs with advice on how to sell the carbon dioxide tax to the electorate. So these two documents give you an insight into the advice that's going into the government and the way the government is proceeding to try and market, because that's what they're doing, this policy. I do not exaggerate when I say these two papers are as significant as the Petrov papers were. One of them has already, on, a, on quadrant, this one, has already been deconstructed by a group of scientists, which includes me. And the second one, the slideshow, I'm going to do a bit of deconstructing of today, and that will also be available in about a week's time in the public domain. It will not surprise you that the mainstream media have not mentioned this event. So moving on to Professor Stephan's presentation. This was the first slide that he showed the multi-party Climate Change Committee. It's a similar slide to one that he showed on behalf of Penny Wong to Senator Fielding the last time we had discussions on this when there was a bill before the Senate. It purports to show temperature since 1850 for the last 150 years as measured by thermometers and averaged all around the world. And overlain on the top of it in red for the last uh, 30 years roughly is this red curve which is the modern satellite measurements which quite closely follow for this part of the record, the, the thermometer measurements. Now, there is so much wrong with this slide that I don't know where to begin. So I'm just going to pick out uh, two things to say about it. The first is 150 years. I've just shown you a diagram with the proper context for climate change, 6 million years. You can actually say virtually nothing about climate change as opposed to weather pattern change on the basis of a 150 year record. Secondly, this record shows no sign of error bars. There's a reason for that, which I will show you in the next slide. Thirdly, the slide is deliberately deceitful. And I will show you why in a moment. But before I do that, contemplate this slide is being shown by the only scientific advisor to our country's committee chaired by the Prime Minister to set policy on this issue. The deceit is in this. If you look at the, the point that is plotted for 2010, you will see that it is above 1998, which is accepted on all the other alternative curves as the warmest year of the last 100 years or so. And when you then look at the date on this presentation, it's November. So how was it possible to plot a point for the year 2010 in November? And the answer is, of course, it's a guess as to what it might be at the end of 2010. And in fact, the temperature, as you'll see on another slide in a moment, was significantly lower. It was about down here. Now take out that uh, point there and you see immediately the eye no longer sees a rising curve. It sees a flat bit of the record in here. The second point about the thing is, I said there's no error bars. Well, they have yellow trucks in England too. And a yellow truck was passing with a tape on it called Climate Gate. And when that bounced off and people looked at the Climate Gate records, this is what they found inside. And for those of you who don't know, Climate Gate was the spilling into the public domain of a whole bunch of records used by the University of East Anglia Climatic Research Unit. And they are the people that does the official temperature record for the IPCC. And what this was was an unpublished report, and you'll understand why it's unpublished in a second, uh, done for their temperature record, which is called the HAD-CM3 record. And this is the estimated error for the January 1969 point that's part of that record. And they have monthly points all the way along. And somebody at some point said to them, hey, chaps, you better do an error analysis. We want to know what your errors are. So this is a map of the errors around the world for January 1969 point. 
and you'll see straight away that over most of the world the error is between one and one and a half degrees, all these blue spots in here, plus or minus one to one and a half degrees. And you'll see as large areas, especially in the northern, uh, northern, northern hemisphere, where the errors are up to four to five degrees or more per year. Now, if we put those error bars on the graph I've just shown you, there is no warming discernible because of the scale of the error. So the idea that you would use that sort of data to set international and indeed Australian <coughs> policy on climate change in, is scientifically indefensible. Let's move to something that's scientifically defensible now, and that is the satellite record. And as I said, it only goes from 1979 to 2011 to today. Uh, and here you see the proper point for 2010. It's not up here where Professor Stefan plotted it for the Prime Minister. It's down here, and there's actually a cooling trend for the last 10 years. Now, it doesn't get much more mm, unacceptable than that. So where we are today, the March figures just come out. We are at minus 0.1 degrees on this scale. That's the March figure. And the red line through the middle is the running mean. And the other thing that's very conspicuous here is the big spike in 1998, which was a very warm year because that was one of the biggest El Ninos of the 20th century. So <clears throat> let's have a look at this. Now, I've put three red spots on. I'm going to make a statement as a scientist about temperature. And what I'm going to say is the temperature in 2011 was the same as the temperature in 1996, was the same as the temperature in 1979. There has been no warming since 1979. Did you read that in the Sydney Morning Herald yesterday? Bob, Bob, how can you do that? You're cherry picking. Furthermore, you've even had the cheek to colour the spots red to draw attention to the fact you're cherry picking. Don't you know that your job as a scientist is to fit lines through the data? Oh, okay, well, let's fit some lines through the data then. Here we go. There was no temperature increase from 1979 to 1995. Here's climate, or weather rather, doing what it does, jogging up and down. And there's no change between 1999 and through to today. Just jogging up and down about a mean. That's the normal variation we see. There is, of course, a step in temperature here of about 0.2 degrees across the 1998 El Nino. That is a meteorological resetting of the world climatology, which climatologists know all about. They've described before. I'm going to show you another example in a moment. And basically, it, 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 a big event like this renders a thermal shock to the system. And when it settles back down again afterwards, it settles down in a slightly different stage. So yes, there's been warming of 0.2 degrees across that 1998 step. But it is not a trend. It's a step. 